Hello there, I'm Chris from Hostcom. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to be running through a AI voice agent in this video. Uh, you may be wondering what that is. Well, an AI voice assistant is essentially a voice interface onto a large language model or AI system. It allows you to talk to the AI system. So rather than going on to something like ChatGPT and typing in your uh, your request or your question, you would essentially talk to it. There are various ways of doing this uh, in the in the contact center or business world. The first one is via a SIP connection. Uh, SIP is the protocol which most modern day telephone systems use. And the other way of doing that is via a web page using something called WebRTC, uh, which has been around for decades, likewise with SIP. So these are two very tried and tested protocols, WebRTC and SIP. Uh, so today we're going to be showing WebRTC. We're going to be talking to this AI voice agent on a, on a web page. Uh, so the, there are various components of an AI voice agent. One of them is the large language model, the AI system. We've got the speech to text, which takes the spoken. It, it takes what you say and turns it into text, which then goes to the large language model. The other components are uh, the, uh, the data store or knowledge base. In the AI world, this is uh, you know these are typically SQL database, something like that. Uh, but we also have vector stores, uh, which is a much more efficient way of storing huge volumes of data and then retrieving it. And we've also got conversation handling applications. And you'll see for yourself that the conversation is very fluid, very natural. I'm going to be interrupting just to demonstrate to you the uh, you know the recovery techniques and how it manages to get the conversation back on track. So what I'll demonstrate is making a call into the voice assistant. This particular one has been set up to handle boiler and heating problems. So it'll qualify, ask a few questions to qualify the nature of the problem. It'll then go to its database or, or knowledge store and pull out relevant information. If it thinks it can uh, talk me through to a resolution over the phone. It'll do that if it's safe. Uh, if it's if it's not safe and really it's a bit risky, what it'll do then is it'll go and raise a ticket, and uh, we'll show that as well. We we've got it integrated with Freshworks, uh, so we can raise a ticket through the voice voice agent, and you'll see that as well. Okay, so just to explain, so there's the the initial voice agent call. We're then making a function call out to a second agent that's handled that handles the diagnostics. We've got a vector store attached to that second agent. Towards the end, we'll also be making a second function call, which is a very simple API connection out to the um, the, fr the fresh desk system to raise a ticket. Okay, so without uh, further ado, let's get straight into it. Hello, I'm Charlie, your AI heating assistant. How may I help you with your boiler or heating system today? Okay, so we've just been greeted by the voice agent. Uh, I've just muted the mic there so it doesn't continue the conversation. But I just wanted to run through what you're actually looking at here. Um, so this is just a, a web page. There's no application involved. It just works using a standard browser. Most browsers today, like Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, uh, have got WebRTC functionality built into it. So they can handle a voice call and pass data back and forward between two browsers. One of the advantages of uh, WebRTC, well, two advantages. Uh, the first one is that it's encrypted between the two points. And the second advantage is because it goes directly from browser to browser, it's a very, it's, it's a low latency call. So you, you'll see that the, the time that it takes between the utterances is, is very short. Okay, so this first bit here is, is the voice agent, just indicates when the agent's talking. Uh, we've also got a chat chat section there which is extremely useful because you can actually see what you can see the, the transcription but you'll see the accuracy is you know we're, we're, we're aiming for 95 percent upwards we'll also be passing some information to the assistant shortly it's uh it's a, it's a multimodal web page this we can do video obviously voice and we can do chat as well so very handy one thing we're working on at the moment is uh, is bringing the video in so potentially this web page here could be a, a single point really for chat telephone calls and and also video and potentially it could all be driven by the voice agent and we could also transfer out to, to a SIP trunk an external number as well based on uh, what's uh, you know based on the uh, based on the intent that the agent recognizes let's get into it 
Hi, Charlie. I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How can I assist you with your boiler today? Uh, I've got no heating at the moment. I'm sorry to hear that. Let's try to get your heating back up and running. Do you see an error code displayed on your boiler? Yes. If so, please tell me what it is. Great. Could you please tell me the error code displayed on your boiler? The error code I can see is E9. Thank you for providing the error code E9. To help you further, I'll need the full make and model of your boiler. And if possible, the gas council number, yeah, which is the, usually uh, on a sticker the on the boiler. The model is a Worcester Bosch CDI 30 regular. Thanks for the information. Ideally, we need the gas council number to provide accurate advice. Do you have the gas council number available yeah, on a sticker it. on your boiler? Yeah, I've found the gas council number. It's, um, it's 4140632. Thanks for providing the gas council number. Just to confirm, the GC number is 4140632. Correct. Is that correct? Great. Thank you for confirming the GC number. I'll look up the information for your Worcester Bosch CDI 30 regular boiler with the error code E9. Please hold on a moment. Thank you for waiting. The error code E9 on your Worcester Bosch CDI 30 regular boiler means that the safety temperature limiter on the central heating flow has tripped. To resolve this, please follow these steps. 1. Perform a system reset on your boiler. How do I do that? This typically involves press. All right, follow these steps to reset your Worcester Bosch CDI 30 regular boiler. 1. Locate the reset button on your boiler. 2. Press and hold the reset button for 3 to 5 seconds. Is 3. Be wait for your boiler to reboot. Anyway? Performing a simple reset on your boiler is generally safe and should not be risky. Okay. If the error persists... Great, let's proceed. Locate the reset button on your boiler and press it for 3 to 5 seconds. Let me know once you've done that and I'll guide you on the next steps. Okay, yes, I've done that. Great. Could you please check if your boiler is now functioning properly and if the error code E9 has cleared? Uh, I've just reset it, but uh, the error code has come back. It seems like the issue persists despite the reset. Since the error code E9 has returned, it's best to have this looked at by a professional. I'll go ahead and raise a support ticket for you. Could you please provide me with your email address so that I can proceed? Yeah, my email address is sales at gmail.com. Thank you for providing your email address. I've raised a support ticket for you. An engineer will get in touch with you shortly to assist further. If you have any other questions or need more help, feel free to ask. That's great. Thanks very much. Thanks for your help. Okay, so that uh, that seemed to go well. Um, we're just going to have a quick look at the help desk system just to see if that ticket's been raised. Okay, so uh, we've got uh, we've got a previous one there, and we've also got this one here. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. There's our error code E9 on a Worcester Bosch 30 CDI. If I open that up, we should have an email address. Okay, so it's collected and raised the ticket correctly there. Okay, so there we go. That was the demonstration of our AI voice agent. It qualified my problem, searched the knowledge base through a vector store, and actually via um, a second agent that was responsible for um, diagnostics. Uh, it correctly diagnosed that uh, as a safe fix, uh, gave the instructions, which was a simple reset. Um, but but actually at that point I said the error code was persisting and and it right it correctly uh, decided that uh, the best thing to do was raise a ticket. We saw a ticket being raised there, so that would have been followed up by an engineer. Um, so that's pretty much what uh, exactly what we wanted to do. Um, thanks a lot for staying to the end of the video and uh, see you on the next one.